guy's a maniac. Why'd he bite me? Welcome back to Blue Jay Bonsai. And you're just in time for Portulacaria Day. First up, it's my original and first Portulacaria Afra, also known as a dwarf jade. Except for my cuttings, it's actually the smallest dwarf jade I have. If we go back to about nine months ago, you can see the last time I worked on it. It started off as not much more than a cutting and it's just starting to take shape here. So now we jump back to almost present day and today's main exercise is going to be actually repotting my little portulacaria, but of course First thing, we've got to get it out of the pot. And it feels like it's wired in there, but I don't usually wire in. So I think it might just be the shape of the pot that's, you know, really holding it in there. So I get out my trusty little shovel. It actually matches the set with my little brass root rake. And we have success. So taking a look at the roots, they're actually looking quite healthy. I've got a few long stragglers that could use pruning. But overall, my plan for this repot is, is not heavy root work. The last time I repotted this little portulacaria, I did do a lot of root work and it sulked for months afterwards. So right here we have a root that I'm gonna try and reposition it's still flexible enough to, you know, put it in line radially out from the trunk. So this is one of my favorite pots. And the fact that it's made by a friend, Isabella, means even more to me. I love the colors on this. I love the bumpy textures and the different colors. It is really a beautiful little pot. So I'm just trying to pick out which is going to be the front. And I think I've decided where there's the bit of orange color that that would be the front. So as usual, a little bit of drainage mesh tied in with the butterfly. And now I know I just finished saying earlier, I don't use wires to wire the trees into the pots but I have been tying in my portulacarias. They, they tend to get so top heavy and they're really easy to fall over. So I add a little bit of some recycled bonsai soil and give the tree a test fitting. And of course, we need to trim off some of those roots. Straight down, but believe it or not, I actually stick to my plan and I don't go too heavy. So I think we need to add a little bit more soil, bring the level up in the pot. And now I'm trying to remember what was the front that I was going to use. There we go. So I just lightly, lightly wire this in trying not to put too much pressure to damage the little roots. And of course, it's so much easier if you cut the wires before you start twisting. So on my second try here, I learned from my, <laughs> I learned from the first wire and things go a little bit easier. There, I was just trying to make sure that that one root that I wanted to reposition is actually where I wanted it. And I sort of bent the wire over top of it to hopefully hold it in place. Just top up some more soil. 
And it's time for the old chopstick. Just want to make sure there are no air pockets or gaps, which could cause the roots to die. So we want to get it all worked in there. So now it's a time for some pruning. And although, once again, I did say I really haven't worked on this tree. It's not quite accurate. I just, I haven't done any major structural work or any other repotting. I have, however, been consistently, consistently pruning this um, Portulacaria for ramification. I'm always going back to either the first or second uh, set of leaves. And ideally, I'm always looking for leaves that are parallel to the ground or horizontal versus up and down. As I'm trying to get the, the ramification of the new branches that will sprout, you know, to be left and right versus up and down. And I'm just double checking the position on these two branches because actually this was the back at one point and I had the two branches more towards the front and I wanted to see if they would be flexible enough to perhaps put some wire on them and bend them the other way. So now I'm just fine tuning some of the pruning, going back, seeing if there's any spots I missed or any opportunities to you know, prune back one set of leaves even further. Double checking that there are no crotch growths or any other leaves and weird spots that need to be cleaned out. I think I'm pretty much done. Just looking for any final stragglers before the carnage cam. Now really, there's not a lot of carnage. Just some fine pruning for ramification and a couple of little bits off the roots. So just take a final spin of the tree, post pruning. Now we jump ahead to basically present day, a couple of days ago. As you can see, shortly after, off camera, I did wire those branches that I mentioned, you know, trying to bring the bring them forward, pointing towards the front. It's not quite there yet, but I think I will get them there. I didn't want to, um, you know, do it all at once and too fast. So I think the tree's looking really well. Uh, I like the ramification it's really starting to get. It's just an adorable little tree. Next up is my big Portulacaria Afra. The last time you saw this was back in October of 2021. So pretty much a year ago. And we had concluded that video with the tree, as you see it here, all wired up and looking pretty bare. So let's take a spin and see how it's looking now. You may also notice that I had already taken the wire off about mm, three or four weeks ago. I noticed it was starting to bite in. But on this Portulacaria, with the type of bark it has, I don't, I don't really mind it. So I'll just start by taking back <laughs> the most obvious stuff that definitely has to come back. So a bit of a, a bit of a hedge prune, to be honest. Uh, and then what I can do after is, is I can come back through and then uh, refined, refined, refine the pruning uh, a little bit better. I'm just gonna assume since this has a few branches coming off, what I'll do is I'll just go to here and we'll just make a pile to the side, both for carnage uh, and for some potential planting some cuttings. That being said, I have so many, I really don't know if I will bother. As usual, I'm looking for the leaves that are going uh, left to right, because if you do wire down, then they will grow out new branches like this versus like that. So when in doubt, I will always leave a couple of extra 
because I can always come back and prune them even further in the second round. And if you are wondering why I left them uh, go so long, I really did want to leave this to grow over the summer, just bush out, recover, get super vigorous, put on a lot of growth. I didn't want to impede that. And of course, when you do make videos for YouTube, unless you're Nigel, <laughs> who does this for a living, um, but what'll happen, I know many others have said the same thing, you plan on making a video, you don't want to prune this unless it's on video. Um, but I don't make videos every single day. So what can happen is some of my projects like this, I'll fall behind on. And that's why sometimes I, I also have to prune things off camera because I, I just have to get it done, but I'm not really set up or prepared to do a video yet. And of course, there is, if there is anybody in the uh, Southern Ontario, you know, Toronto type area, like some of these cuttings, please let me know. Do my best to for you to come pick them up or meet somewhere mutually inconvenient. Sometimes you really got to peek in there, see where the branch is starting so you can go back to the first set. Sometimes you find weird things, sticks and branches and fluff. Lord knows what the birds and squirrels and insects get up to when you're hiding inside. So I am going to leave this uh, really long one. It's already started to kind of ramify on its own and split off a few branches, which I've, I've trimmed. It could give us new options for um, future growth, future style changes, uh, or at worst case, it becomes like a sacrifice branch and will just grow on. But I'm going to leave it for now. So far, we're, we're doing pretty well. I've gotten been able to take back most of the crazy growth. Just looking for any stragglers now. Take care of them. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but or the microphone will pick it up. But if you listen really closely, you might hear some thunder in the background. It's starting to get quite overcast, and I think we're going to have a nice bit of rain today, which will make all my friends who are collecting rainwater in their rain barrels extremely happy. You know who you are. Okay, let's just step back and take a look. Actually, First, we're gonna check out the carnage cam. In this case, the cuttings cam. So I will take these in, I'll let them dry out. Uh, I'll hang on to them for about a week. Uh, if anyone wants them, like I said, please let me know. If not, they're gonna be salad. No, <laughs> maybe salad for Nigel. So I think, oh, I missed a spot. So I think that that's all we're going to do today. I think with the rain coming, I don't want to get too heavy into this. Oh, I see a couple of missed spots here. Wow. That's good. So we will call that quits for the day. It's funny how you spot things on your so-called final look. So we'll wrap up with that for today. So Yella from Growing Bonsai with Yella asked me about this tree. So that's partly why I'm doing this update, but of course many people have asked for the update. I may or may not keep this style. It was something I styled, 
uh, much earlier on in my bonsai career. Career. <laughs> uh, and I might not have styled it the, the same as I did. Um, I mean, ultimately, I may even just <laughs> chop this whole top off as a giant cutting and turn these branches down here uh, into a canopy with the big fat trunk. So anyways, let me know what you think. I think I should just keep kind of growing it on like this and try to refine this style I've started or maybe cut it all back. I know what Nigel will say, but Nigel told me to cut it all back from the beginning, but I didn't listen. <laughs> so there you go. And now it's time for subscribers picks. If you'd like to see your photos of your trees, bonsai or pre bonsai on the channel, then send us an email with your name, the name and species of your tree and any other interesting information. Ben sent us these picks. First up, this amazing large Portulacaria Afra. This is a Adenium Arabicum. They're hard to find. And of course, this is a cool Gollum Jade with a nice fat trunk. The legendary Matt Brennan sent us these pictures showing the progression of his Root Over Rock Strangler Fig from a little seedling he picked off a tree in Florida. To its current state now, happily growing in Connecticut. Wow, what a progression. Patrick Pratt sent us these pictures. First is his Snow Rose Sarissa. And in this can are some Chinese elm cuttings. Everything else grew there on their own. My friend Marisol from the YouTube channel Frostbite Bonsai sent us these pics of her figs grown from seeds. And of course, an update on her $50 bonsai challenge, two types of ivy. Make sure you go and check out her channel. Eric and Emma sent us these pics. And first up is a beautiful little Portulacaria. Recently restyled and potted up in this new pot from Kim's Nature. Next is this variegated Benjamina cutting in a little black pot from Nigel. This is a boxwood cut back to a stump and allowed to start to grow back. Last but not least are two coleuses. Typically a house plant, but you're doing an amazing job of turning them into bonsai. My son Jacob took these photos of a mama bird in her nest. And that nest is in a beautiful Japanese maple at our local Conan Nurseries. Thanks for watching. See you on the next episode.